Uh, yeah, you can record the call. So I'm going to call to order the CPC regular meeting on August 18th, 2022. It is 6.03 p.m. This is an in-person and a Zoom meeting. This meeting is being recorded and can be viewed at a later date via the uh, comments on YouTube channel. Uh, if we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dave, can you, you want to get rid of that? Yeah. Well, yeah, get rid of that and I um can you start um the video on that? Yes I can. All right, there we go. And so far, it's just us, just to let you know. Right. So we'll start off with committee member introductions. Um, Kevin Smith Jr., I'm the chairman of the CPC and also the representative from Parks and Recreation. I'm Bill Pruitt, vice chairman of CPC. Uh, Dan Higgins, I'm the DSL planning board. Dave Marble, um, uh, so I have another committee I'm on, and that's uh, the cable committee. Jonathan Gale, member at large, chair of the Commission on Disability. Chair of Digits Conservation. And then we also have uh, David Eckerson, who is with us on Zoom and will be here in person shortly, who is an at-large member and our financial um, reporter for the committee. <laughs> Uh, we, we can we can start off and have a we'll start with a little business and just a recap of the CPC training while we wait for Dave to get here. Um, I know Dave Marble, you had shared um, the PowerPoint presentation. I think with all of us, I think everybody got that in their email. Yeah. Um, so if we need well, to review with it. Is that supposed to come from uh, Stuart? No, actually. So he gave Dave a flash drive, and then yeah, he, yeah, he left it on it. He said, "Go, go for it." So. He allowed us to share the, the PowerPoint oh. presentation from the screen because we place it on the screen and I was going to remove it and I say, hey, can I have that? He said, sure. So how do I share that? How do I get that? It went to your email, basically. Did you get it? Uh, I don't recall seeing any email from you. It would have been from you. Yeah, I can try to send it again. Um, let me look for it because I think I have it on my uh, server at home. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah, I didn't get it. Okay. Try but I'll try again. Okay. Uh, before the weekend, so I'll make sure you have it. I'm forward to doing that. Check it. Yeah, I mean, did anybody have any questions or comments about that? That training, I think it, it gave us a good start on point to kind of kick back off and get reorganized. Yeah. And then it, it answered several questions that at least I wasn't clear about, things that we can do, things we can't do, the limitations that we had or thought we had or don't have. And I know I'm being vague, but what I mean is it, it clarified a lot in terms of what, what we can do going forward. And what, how we can allocate or the types of things we can allocate. And I think for me, that's really what was more important to understand what we can and how we can. So I got a lot out of it. Yeah, and actually just him mentioning the availability of information on their database. I've gone back like in the last month and just to check on a couple different things. And there's a, literally everything you need to know is in that database. And it's pretty easy to find. Um, it breaks it down just like he was showing us. The, I really like that chart with the yeses and noes for what is and what isn't eligible. But it breaks right on the in the database. It breaks it down like to a T with all the actual language behind each category, what you can and cannot do. So I think it's a good reference point for as we move forward and start to get applications for new projects. 
I did notice one thing on that asking the question early on about uh, historic properties being repurposed. Was it that was I think that was the first question you want to ask about it, but um, he said yes, but but he talked about you know not he didn't he didn't he wasn't very detailed about that. He just said that it was possible to do that if I repurpose it, but you can't just um, willy nilly cut the building and that kind of thing. But that so that. That could be a problem later on if, if the town comes before us about that. And then I went through all of the. Well, anyway, I don't want to spend a lot of time. No, on no it's okay. I mean, we. I want to kill a little bit of time because the next okay, thing we almost so, need Dave uh, Harrison here. So, I went and looked at all the documents that Dighton has about CPC, including the the warrant article that created it and so forth. Yes, and. Um, and, and then there's some supplemental stuff also on the Dighton website, you know. And I, I didn't see anything specific about repurposing uh, historic buildings. So maybe it's something on, on, the, on the state website. Tomorrow. Yeah, so I'm pulling that up right now because I do remember it's that. Um, somebody can help me. It's the federal, the, what's it called? The federal. The, the federal regulations, but yeah, federal federal regulations yes. yeah, um, that he always said to refer back to that. And if it was within the, those guidelines, then it would be CPC eligible. But as I, I distinctly remember saying, like, oh, well, if you're going to take this building and change it to all vinyl windows and vinyl siding, then no, they're not going to, yeah. you know, we need to, well, under the federal guidelines, preserve its history. But then it's, oh, you're saying that there's some federal regulation that. Where would you find? Where would I find something like that? So he actually gave it to us. Okay. Um, I think in the PowerPoint he had okay. the federal code as well. It wasn't very long. It was literally a paragraph. Mm -hmm. So it was very short. Um, I just don't. Yeah, because it was almost like a bullet point yes. to it, and then you would refer back to that. Um, it, and and you, he did say similar to to what the two of you were saying. You know, he said, look, if you're if you're looking to take and put a clapboard on or vinyl siding. Or something like that. That probably wouldn't fly. But if you're doing it to preserve the building, but you have to retrofit it, for example, as part of the preservation to make it accessible, as as an example, then certain components of that might be considered palatable in terms of funding. So you really have to look at when you're repurposing. What is it? What is the specific function of what you're doing for? What was it for? And Excuse me. What's the what are you actually doing within the interior or the exterior? And I think we also, for example, we also made reference to the historical society house at the end of Center and Williams Corner there, mm -hmm. and that was an example. Was if it was for a capital improvement that needed to be done because it was if it was something just to change the aesthetics in the building, you can't do it. But if there's a capital improvement that has to be done because of leaks and so forth and things like that, there are certain parameters that allow us to do that. Okay, so, but, but just based on his uh, quick answer to my question, um, all, all, all we know is that you can't cut the building, but, but there, there are other possibilities yes. as well. So, yeah. yeah. So this is actually a good piece right here, and this is right under that <laughs> historical project staff as they give you this whole flow chart of. Um, what you can and cannot do, so it kind of gives you us the yeses and nos of for historic projects. And actually, it does this for every category, which is nice. So that pretty much falls into the library falls into that, then, right? Yes, because that would be because it, again, depending on the scope of the work. If you look at those acquisition, okay, that's oh, that's buying it or whatever preservation. Rehabilitation. I looked it up to see what the distinction is. Um, rehabilitation is not repurposing, and restoration is not necessarily repurposing either. So, aside from his answer to my question, that's the only reference I've seen so far about repurposing. Well, I think if you if you repurpose in the building for another use, mm -hmm. but you're maintaining the historic value of it. Then it, that's that a very great area, yes. and that's, that's I think what we have to find. Yeah. And I think that's where we have that chart, and that's where we have whether it's the library or other things that come across. Probably the impression I got from him was that we have leeway there. 
It's not a hard fast. Yes, you have that chart to work with, but there is some discretion on how you do the interpretation. Yeah, I rehabilitate names that's in that chart. Rehabilitation is remodel or is it or make it the property functional for its intended use, including improvements that apply with any state federal. I still haven't seen I want to look, I'm gonna see the word repurpose. And I haven't seen that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, other than his comment. We certainly can, I mean, you, can, just, you can reach out to Stuart directly too and ask that uh, question. Yeah, and yeah, well, it came up at the Ash Store Commission. I brought it up. And uh, Ken, what well, Selectman Ken was on, he's, he's, a, uh, he's not a voting man. He's a liaison. Right. So, anyway, I just happened to mention him to him that business of what Stuart had said about no gutting the building. Mm -hmm. and, um, and and then I mentioned to him that if we <laughs> couldn't resist it, if, if we were to vote against the project that someone had submitted, then <laughs> he'd have to find someplace else for his money to get his money. He didn't like that too much, I have a feeling. Right. Well, I mean, we all think we need to hear to the guidelines that are presented to us, and it doesn't matter what the project is. And I think the library is a prime example of one that we're really going to have to dig in and make sure we cross our T's and dot our I's. Because yeah, I think your idea about I, I could email Stuart because I get email from him. So, <laughs> um, and maybe ask him if there are any projects that he's aware of similar to what you know repurposing. Mm -hmm. Because I just want to, I'd like to get a better feel for that. But, but anyway, that, that's kind of far off. So. Um, I just want to, to anyone, if anyone's watching on Zoom, that Dave Eckerson is not with us in person. Hi, Dave. Hi. Um, we're just uh, on the pool of business, just talking about the CPC training. Oh, sure. I didn't know if you had anything yeah. to add to, to that before we move on. Yeah, I was able to catch you. Um, so the next thing on the whole business is the Community Pres Preservation Coalition dues. I know we did vote to approve um, making that payment, but I'm not sure. That, um, did you do you know if yourself or Tom Berkman actually executed that payment? I have not. Seen so, it, so I have a copy of the ledger, and it looks like a payment was made. He said he Okay. When was that? Out of that account, dues and subscriptions, because it's already negative 875. Okay. I can just double check with yeah. the town accountant to see when that was that made. That is this year. What do you mean? Is this, uh, this could be the one from last fall, right? It, it, yeah, that oh, is so last. Yeah, 2022. Yeah. Right, so this one would be for that, what, 23? 23, yeah. Right, cool. That was sent us a bill. But thank you for coming. Well, that was another question. I didn't know if, if, if that had already been executed. So, but if not, um, I'll ask Stuart directly to, to or um, Chase Mack to resit, submit an invoice um, and we can get that paid. It's also possible just with the change in account accounts. Right. That things are just a little bit behind and slow down. Well, the, I believe the, the bill was and the department of course, I know you're checking our mailbox now. I don't know, but I'm nice to meet you. <laughs> you're checking the mailbox. Yeah. yeah. So that will come to our mailbox. Yeah. Well, I know, I think Tom Berkman had received it at one point. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know if he would be with us tonight, but I did ask him to bring the key and any paperwork that he had. But, um, and I do have, I also have a pretty uh, most recent ledger and I don't recall seeing anything from, um, It came up at the last meeting. Is there anything I forget in the minutes of whether he said he had a bill or? He did. But I think he physically has the bill. What is what the invoice? To get a copy of the invoice? Well, that's what I think. I can just have the co Mass Community Preservation Coalition just resend us an yeah. invoice and just the expert. Right. Yeah. And yeah. instead of yeah. waiting yeah. Um, for, for the reply from Mr. Perkin. Um, I actually, if I don't, I'll entertain a motion to take item D in old business out of order um, so that Mr. Digits can be present for that because I think that's an item that we're going to vote on. I'll make a motion to take item D of old business out of order for the purpose of continuing the conversation. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, so uh, we have review, discuss, and act technology for the CPC clerk, uh, Dave Marble, to present options. Yeah, so what I did was basically, I start off roughly with around $500 or so, and then I went to uh, Leanne, and I said, you know, she said she has a person she deals with, they get the equipment through town hall. So I didn't get a chance to get to a printer today because I had to run some errands and she gave me this quote at the last minute. So I'm looking right now for a Dell Latitude 30, 3520, uh, 8 gigs, i5, 15.6 screen. Uh, it's got Windows 10, you can move it up to Windows 11. The price right now is uh, $833.99. Now, that's with 256 gigs. I wonder if we should try to get you more. Or, you, or that's plenty, what do you think? Uh, depending on how many files you need me to transfer over to. With this committee, you're probably gonna need a lot. But do we have the ability to have any cloud storage? Yeah, I gotta take up with them because I had that conversation with the clerk about putting that stuff on cloud. I never really got a good answer. You could always get a, a flash drive. drive where I can put things on. Yes, well. that might make more sense that way. And then the uh, Microsoft license along with that, um, basically that's done through, through the cloud, but they don't want to do it. So they're going to give you a, a 2019 license. They want like $70 for it. Then going on with the printer, they say no to the printer. They, they say since you're here most of the time, you can bring your stick in and just print off what you need. So I'm not sure if you're okay with that. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense too, because I'm not worried about making sure you have rings of paper and bring yeah. the only, the only thing I would, I would go back to is the 2019 license for $70. Is it a two or three year license because it might be expiring this year? I think it's going to expire, but they don't want us going through the clouds just yet for the subscription. They're trying to avoid it until it comes. That's the answer I got from that. So are they thinking that once we turn over to the new website that we're going to jump on to a new cloud subscription? I mean, I can check, but they really they, they really say they're trying to wait till the last minute to do that. They've been giving up like just the, everybody's just been purchasing the license. No one's really on Office 365. Have you seen anybody? I have not. No. What was the, um, what was the total again for the computer itself? The computer itself, and uh, I can, I'll give this to you later. I'm sorry I didn't have time. It's 833.99. Okay. And that's a Dell Latitude 3520. It's an i5. It's got eight gigs, which is not too bad because we're just doing uh, Word. 15.6 screen. Um, I just got this like probably at four o'clock when I was driving. Windows 10 <laughs> on it for now, and then we can move it up to Windows 11 if we need to. What did you notice about a webcam? Uh, I think it does, but I'll double check that. Okay. As far as the cloud, um, you know, Microsoft has a cloud component, um, <coughs> which is Teams. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's Dropbox, there's others too. So that one way or another, I think all of us who want to be able to see what's there or just have historical documents and things like that, we have to have a shared file which for me is the easiest thing in the end, personally, especially if there's things that are going in there that I have to listen to. So, it's a drive for, like, for the sewer department, so there must be a drive where we could all be <clears throat> invited to. That well, I know like sort of COD, Jonathan and I use Dropbox. Yep. Uh, I think as long as it's secure, I, I, I'm always hesitant to for anything to put any financial documents on there, but I think for sharing minutes, agendas, and, and even applications. Well, I think Office 365 gives you a, a terabyte of yes, space. Into the cloud. Yeah, which yeah. is good. Because I have that for my own, my own office. Well, like I said, when I talked to uh, uh, Mr. Pacheco on it, he just wouldn't say what we can do, so he's got to look into it. I could be wrong in the way I'm saying it, but it's like we didn't have a cloud option or a server option back then. Well, if we needed to in the very short term, until there's a resolution separately, um, if you don't already use Dropbox, for example, I can just create a folder and call it, you know, CPC, share it with you, and then give you where you and Kevin writes to share with everybody else. And it's that simple. You got plenty of space? Oh, yeah. I have, yeah, because I have a business account. I know we're going off. How much you pay a month for that? I pay an annual fee of about $110. Oh, that's not bad. Dropbox is actually relatively. How much space you get? Um, 
50, I don't know, but it's like so many terabytes. Wow. No, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the right route to go. So, and I've got, I've only used about 11% of it. So I think I've got a huge amount to go. And half of what I have is going to disappear when I clean it up anyway. Right. So. And the other thing, the only reason I'm going with them because I got a laptop for five hundred thirty dollars, and I try to get them, like the head of Dell, who's got our account, to take this. I said, "Oh no, you have to go with a commercial laptop." So she took that, and she said, "This is what you really need." Do you know if they offer any warranty at all, or extended service plan? This one year on this, um, one year uh, on this particular laptop. I actually pulled it up here, so and it does have. Um, yeah. I, I bet it's going to yeah, camera, and microphone. Yeah. I think it's pretty standard now. Um, it might even have different things built in. It might even have a Dropbox built into it. And it was 16, 16 gig? No, 8. 8 gig. Okay. How much is the 16? Uh, I replied back to her. I want to know how much the 16 gigs and go up to 500. Because I thought 250 gigabytes is not enough. I mean, it's adequate, but I wanted to have a buffer, have more. Yeah. So, I mean, it's showing here. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is. Dell's website, but it's shown 789 for an 8 gig, and then that's but I don't choose all the other options, then it jumps up to 839 for 16 gigs. So you got like a $50 difference. Which is well worth it. I I just don't like we're gonna use an external drive anyway in Dropbox. I don't know if it if it matters. All right, so we can keep it away. Yeah, I would just keep it away. You um you want me to go with that basically? Well that's uh um I'll entertain a motion. Someone wants to. Is that, I just want to ask first before we. Is this, I'm assuming this is compatible with most any printer, one way or another? Yes. Well, don't forget, she's going to be taking uh, her stuff on a uh, on a thumb drive, taking it to the printer anyhow. Have you ever done it before? Because I, I haven't really tried using a. Uh, have you used a thumb drive in the past as far as? Not here. No. Well, you have a printer, have and then, printer so you should be able to and wireless, wireless. Oh, okay, so you can, yeah. Uh, yeah. right. Okay, so you yeah. should be good. Yeah. Oh, and one uh, before, actually, before we, we have a motion, um, what was the, the subscription for uh, Microsoft Office 70, or for the license? It was a 29, I can check again, it was a 2019 license, and it was like $75. Does that Office suite include Outlook and so forth? It does, but uh, I thought we're not using Outlook in the way. We're using Gmail here, right? Okay. I just so, don't know. I don't know what we're using. But so it comes with PowerPoint, Word, Excel. All of our town email addresses are through Outlook. I can't answer that question. I'm not really that savvy here with what they do. So I mean, what we look at is more for all, well, for all intents and purposes, this computer is mostly being used for word processing and document yeah. sharing. So right. yeah. I don't think and you're going to log be, into your, you know, your town email just like you would on yeah. the. And an i five is a good processor. Where an i three could be a dog. You could, you know, it's not. But you get an i five processor, which is yeah. pretty good. You can get your emails through Google too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you, and you can also configure it. If I know my laptop at, home, at this one, and I don't know about the one you have right there, um, is configured so that my town email just comes right into it. I get the same thing for me, so you're right about that. We don't have to use the Outlook account because I think that's more on a, on a, if someone get an exchange service somewhere. So I don't think that would be feasible for us. So right, let what, me is our budget? what is our budget? Just out of curiosity. We have five thousand dollars for professional and technical. Okay. Does that fall under office supplies though? No, like it's cut. Well, it's it's not professional and technical. It's administrative and. Dave, what's the exact that? The called. Are you going to call for a motion? Mm -hmm. I'm talking to be. Yeah, we've used that for. Uh, seems like. Heavy. I'm just trying to think of what exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna just find out the accounting and then we'll. Okay, you're probably going to remind because I don't know what the town's rules are for capital. That here. Does the town budget have a in the budget for CPC have a line item for specific line item? Yes, so that it falls under our
Well, as, as uh, Kevin said, there's professional tech. Administrative yeah. expenses is what it's, is. <clears throat> and that's the 5,000. Yes, so I'll entertain a motion um, to expend, not to exceed, we'll call it $920 just for the purchase of the Dell Latitude 3520 laptop. Okay. Um, in the amount of $833.99, plus the Microsoft Office license for $75 to come from our administrative expense account. What are we doing on the thumb drive? Do we have enough for that? Include that too, to get our external drive? Uh, again, I think we'll have to look into it. And, okay. I mean, oh, unless we try it, something yeah. else, right? Yeah. You can drop box or something. Okay. Correct. All right. So just to let you know, I'm going to go forward because basically the way Karen said is they can get it shipped out. It'll be, and then they're going to come to us and say, take it out of your account. Mm -hmm. okay. I will second that. Do we have a motion? Oh, you second that. So I said, yes, there was, yes, do you want to repeat the motion? Or? No. I thought he was asking for a motion. Oh, well, I understand. Okay, okay. So, okay. All right, we're good. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Digit. I'll see you next door. I'll be over there to run your meeting later on. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Bye -bye. All right, so we'll jump back um, to item C, which is financial report. I think we all, Dave has, you have an updated ledger, right? Elizabeth gave us another. Well, we do have a. Well, it seems like it ran was a whole fiscal year. Yeah, okay. The updated ledger is not very uh, helpful. It's a public report. So what we're going to do now is uh, wait. Now, what's the status of the town account? It is the person has been hired and they will be incoming to and starting soon. I talked to right. Administrator Mullen and they are moving towards getting that person in place. Right. So, uh, you know, Assistant, yes. Yeah, so, um, Lisa, yeah. the, the assistant is staying with us. So, for now, I think for any you know old business, as far as accounting goes, um, she's going to be our go to for answers because she probably is going to know where to find things a little bit better than uh, <clears throat> right? Yeah, so, anyway, so to update her. So, Tom and I did go in there, but I'm not sure if we discussed this on the, uh, the previous meeting, but Tom and I did go in and meet with Janelle before she left. And um, to you know, acknowledge the, uh, the report we have been getting is a little lacking because the um, previous year's warrant articles kind of disappear as you uh, as the years progress. Mm -hmm. So these, um, what we want to do is work with the new incoming account to generate a new report that you know, gives us a little more visibility into what was uh, the uh, what they call the encumbrances. Mm -hmm. You know, set aside for warrant articles from previous years. So, so what we don't lose track of that. What makes that really tricky too, and I know this from experience with like a couple parks and recs items is so you know when a warrant article is written, like say for instance with the with the North Lake Playground, it's to be expended by the Parks and Rec Commission. So that automatically gets pulled from our ledger and goes into a special article and then the CPC doesn't really necessarily see it again. It's oh, one it's okay. from the accounts and then Parks and Rec handles paying those bills. But I know there's certain ones like from sitting in on, on previous meetings when the Historic Commission did the markers, that bill was given to the CPC to be paid. So those that's where we need to go back and decipher what's still in our ledger and what we're responsible for paying and then what has been written as a warrant article to be expended by a different. Okay. I do have a question though. So when we bought those, uh, when we paid for those electrical grids for uh, the elderly housing up there, and I think Dave mentioned it too, they did not stop working on it. And I was reading the CPC too, that you can actually set a time limit mm -hmm. saying like, okay, if you guys don't use, if you don't get this project completed in, you know, in three months, then the money can be called back or whatever, right. which we really don't want to do, but take, take like River, Riverside, whatever that is, uh, the elderly housing. Yeah, they haven't even started the work. And that money, well, actually, you know, know, we're going to talk about that a little bit. In okay, business. so let's as part of our application process. But I'm trying to say, CPC, you can actually throw a time limit out, right? Just to let these people know if we have to. Yeah, so we actually we probably need to go back to FY 
20 and look at because I think that was when that that was done was 2019. I know there was the rough thing in ball field lighting and fencing, which we're just using now. But that was one that we won't see in our ledger because it's being expended by us. And then I know the housing authority was the same situation. So we'll have to go back and look at the Warren articles yeah. and then go back in our ledger and look for if this right. matching encumbrance or, or not. So we'll so so have, you, to, so might have to do a little bit of homework in myself with uh, accounting. Do we know, I got um, two years of history here. So yeah. Do we know that ledger then, it may not be up to date as you said, as of June 30th, the close of the town's fiscal year. Yeah, we don't have the, um, the, the last report I got Account was uh, February of 22. And that doesn't even, you know, that doesn't include, uh, that just includes the 21 work. This is, this is it. I've handed these, I'm sorry. You know, I, you know, I don't have any one, but maybe I should just do that. But we, if you've been here for a while, you've seen these reports. And what happens here is that this is a February of 22 report. It concludes the uh, uh, town meeting warrant votes for. Town meeting of 21, mm -hmm. but the votes for town meeting of 20 have you know, disappeared from this entirely. So it's a it's a pretty misleading report. Actually. So on that report, for example, for anything that was approved for 20, yeah, it's 20 to 21. Right. It's, it's you wouldn't should, see it unless you see it. unless if, again depending on the point. language of the article. But it's. Is it's it there here period. as an encumbrance or an expenditure? Okay, okay. That's you know, you've lost track of what the, what it was for. It right. Uh, the, so I the the ledgers that we have now are for the end of the fiscal year. So the I mean, in essence, the balances are correct, with the exception of something like North Dayton housing, where that's a bill that we're paying. That's going to affect this ledger. So that's kind of the information we got to find out. Mm -hmm. Right. But if it was to be expended by the housing authority, then essentially we don't need to worry about it because that was our, that money was taken from those accounts sure. and moved to a, a special account to be no. expended by them. But for example, the allocation for the North Titan playground. That's, that that is not reflected in here because it's- So we don't have yet an accurate- And that's FY23 yeah. also. So yeah. we're right. just, we don't have any reports okay. beyond the end of the uh, FY22. Yeah, I right. believe this is the actual FY22 final. Janelle assured me that everything, there is a trail in the system for everything. Yes. And actually, the incoming accountant, because uh, as she worked previously in the um, town of Rockland, and she has pretty um, extensive experience working with the FCPC. Which is good. So right. she's familiar with the reporting and and how this particular type of account works. So I think we'll we'll be in good shape. We just kind of need to do our homework and go back and look at that what the warrant articles were and if they were isolated from our account or if they're still in there as an encumbrance. But so this is a, a hand generated report which you know create by picking. Yep. So it's quite a, it's a pretty um, elaborate job to get it right, but I think. Um, mm -hmm. We set it up right so that the whole things don't go away. Correct. Uh, we'll have a more useful report going forward. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else have anything to add as far as just our typical financial reports? Thank you for having us. <clears throat> All right. So, um, is there any other old business? All right. So, under new business, our first item is review, discuss, and act. Um, CPC annual state financial reports. I bounced back and forth to meet us with Dave and with Mr. Pruitt um, just about what our requirements are of, uh, as far as reporting to the state and the coalition. Um, the actually, let me pull this, let me screen share. I'll get this up on my computer so we can all look at it.
Okay, so the first form, which is called the CP1 form, um, and I did, I, I emailed the Chase Mack from the coalition and he kind of confirmed all this. So the CP1 form, um, which I think is the one that I handed off. That's the assessors. So actually, I already handed that form off to the assessors. That just shows what the um, percentages are. The tax percentage that goes into our CBC funds. So that is the um, board of assessors will fill that out, return it back to us, and then we'll submit that to the state. There's not much. Um, there's nothing for us to do on that one. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not even sure we are responsible. For that. We're not. It's. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I don't think we have to vote on it. No. No. I think we'll, we'll take it back and just and we'll submit them all together. Um, and then the CP2 form, which is the accounting for, form, which is the responsibility of the town accountant um, to fill, we'll probably have to work with the new town accountant to help kind of fill in some of that information. Right. And again, you know, it's the same, um, same information that falls under that uh, standard report. So. The balances of the individual funds and uh, any approach, any changes that were made at town meeting. Yep. So and that is not due to October 31st. So. Yeah, yeah. So the CP1 is September 15th, um, CP2 is October 31st. And then the one that is our responsibility, which is the CP3, which just shows any allocations that we made for the prior fiscal year. I did go back and look at the annual town meeting warrant from last year and i think the only project that was approved under that fiscal year was a twenty-five thousand dollar project for historical and it was part of i think it was the beginning of the historical markers project so we we, we have until um september 15th that gets reported online um i've got new login information from the state so we can access that database online and do that report um, so obviously we're talking about these going forward, but are there any of these that are in arrears that were failed to be done in previous years that we need to catch up on? I don't believe so because in, in talking, um, in emailing with, with Chase Mack, he, he didn't make any indication that we were behind it or we, we would do any old paperwork. Um, so again, I think that's only, we'll go back and we'll again, just confirm with the town of Holland and we'll see that when we're looking at encumbrances or warrant articles. That have been moved out, but I believe there's only that one project to um, to put on there, and then we'll zero out the other two categories because it's just it was open space, historic, and what was the third one, Dave? Community this housing. One, this one, I believe, is only applies to uh, acreage and units of community housing. So it doesn't anymore. This is a GIS. That so that printed form is old. Because that's what I asked you. I said, "Oh, we didn't have any acquisitions," and then Chase said, "Any, any type of um, allocations for those categories need to be reported on CP3 now. It's not just acquisitions." So that that did change, and now it's online reporting. Because I did print that form originally, and then uh, and it has changed some. So it's all allocations, not just acquisitions. Okay. So we'll just confirm that and then submit. But yeah, most of the most of the work is to be done by the town account and the board of assessors. We just have that one form which should be relatively easy. Um, next order of business review, discuss and act CPC application process. That also falls, that falls under the same, that goes hand in hand with the CP2 that goes with the town account. So, uh, let me ask a question. Yes. Yes. So, anyone who's been here for a few years, okay, uh, it's been, do you remember ever voting on these reports before? Or any of these reports in the beginning? No. I've been here three years. I never. All right. So, I feel like, too, just in reviewing the, the sign offs that are required on each form, there's nothing for us to sign off of on CP1 or CP2. But the CP3 form, I mean, it does have a pretty lengthy um, right. this is sign off. Which specifically says that the yeah. members should sign it off. But, but if it was the old form in previous years, we didn't buy, yeah, we did. We bought land. 
we contributed to the evolution of the animal. All right. So what I'll do is once I get into that, once we decipher if that was the only project that needs to be reported, um, when I get in into the database, I'm, I'd have to assume that if it's an online database, they're not requiring any type of signatures. I mean, I think we'd certainly report it at our next meeting that this was, you know, was submitted under this book. And I can also upload something. Right. That's also a question. So my team is doing this electronically too now. Yes. Is... But I can ask that question of Chase. I haven't gone back into the database since they gave me the new login credentials, but we can ask that question prior to this. That, that's due on the 15th, but we can figure that out if, if we need to do anything as, as the entire committee before that gets submitted. <clears throat> All right, so review, discuss, and act on the CPC application process. I don't know if everyone, you want to start off with your comment. I think you had the best opening, the best <laughs> reply through our emails about, you know, taking it piece by piece. And, um, yeah, I, I don't have the email in front of me, so I can't remember half of it. But, um, but obviously, I mean, the, the first one that jumped out at me was, those that have a two-step process, which I think even I mentioned at the at the over that times do this, which is just a real quick baseline. Are you even eligible based upon what you're requesting in the CPC guidelines before we have you come in, make a presentation, spend a lot of money on printing and you know, maybe hiring somebody to help you and, and to find out that you know really this isn't gonna fly. Um, um, and then the step, next step beyond that is um, guidelines that we make publicly available about, yes, you, these are the things that are eligible technically, mm -hmm. but the CPC collectively has said, you know, we're favoring X, you know, in the, each of these categories, these are the things we're looking at, these are the things we're giving priority to, but making that information publicly available to any requesters doesn't mean you get denied on that, but, but just be aware that this is what we're favoring. Um, I kind of like the two-step process. Um, it just makes it clear to people what can and can't be done, and I don't know how many times they have come to CBC that were not legitimate. It'd be very few, but just for transparency, it makes it very clear. I, I agree 100%. And I think what you're saying, too, putting the information out there ahead of time, because I know myself through personal experience, I had no idea what the process was. I found one application form that said, that was so let's up and bring it in and we know how that went. That went so well. And I, I actually think once we really establish the guidelines, the criteria, and how we, what we're looking for, and we review it, I think it makes sense to actually either use one of our monthly meetings or a special meeting for public for public input slash informational session. So well that so, actually is going to be our next agenda item, which is the annual public hearing. Which is which, exactly that. Which goes hand in hand with this. Yeah, I mean, we can almost, because I don't, we can almost have that, this as a two part discussion because I think it does tie in hand in hand. It's right. because the whole purpose of that, that annual public hearing is that all the representatives of each other, you know, outside committee, planning, housing, historical parks, and, and, and uh, conservation is. At that annual meeting, that's when we're supposed to say that like parks has this in the pipeline, historic has this in the pipeline. So we're forecasting, you know, those projects, and then it gives us a better idea of you know something that comes out of the blue, whether or not we can fund it. I think well. we have to be careful of, though with the the annual meeting is one thing, but I think if if the there it may be a separate meeting in terms of you know discussing going reviewing the application process public meeting to review the application process, the procedures, the expectation. And, you know, what are the deadlines for submission of A, B, and C? Unless we're going to have all the deadline for our entire application be the same. Have this to us, then we're going to review it, then there's going to be a two-week review process. I think that has to be laid out to some extent. And what I'm getting at is, for the purposes of transparency, I think we don't want to be able to have a meeting and say, well, this one, unless it's something that's already allocated from prior year or from a bond or something that affects our funding that year, what's available. I don't think we want to necessarily automatically say X, Y, and Z is allocated already because okay. I can I can hear people saying, wait a minute, you said this is a meeting to find out what's blah, 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 and now you're telling us this is already allocated. 
So I think unless it's pre-allocated from prior year for a purpose, and it's purposed already, we need to be extra careful on that. I'm not following you 100%. So we, we, we allocate a set percentage for each category every year. Right, I, no, I realize that. And then we have a designated fund. But like, I, I think, are you trying to, so I think that's what we're trying to outlay is what the application process is gonna be and what we're gonna ask of individuals yes. applying. That's what I'm saying. But like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna give them any, any of that information outside of just our normal meetings where we have financial reports. No, no, but I, think, but I do think that we should have a public meeting where the application process, deadlines and procedures are laid out for any interested committees, organizations, related to anything that we can potentially support or fund are going to come and get the presentation at the same well, time. Well, I think that is, that is again, a purpose of the annual public hearing is to let our committees that are have seats at, yeah. within this commission, but also, yes, invite the public and present the new, you know what's going to be a new application process. I think we're kind of saying the same thing. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, I'm trying to, well, that's what I'm trying to reiterate it in my own head, so. No, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, is everyone aware we do have a, a written document specifying the application process? Yes. We have. So, I think you know, we ought to also plan at some point to review this, update it, get it posted on our uh, space on the town website. Uh, well, I think that's where we're at right now is, yeah. is how to clean this up because right. we, we have. So, in, in our existing process, you have the application for eligibility. So you brought that, again, I'll just keep using the park as an example because it's the only one I have, is I brought my application to el for eligibility and it was like, yes, it was um, it was eligible. And then you had your application for funding. There was no, but there was no application for funding. It was like a, a made up document. Right. So it's, there's no, right, there's no formal document. So that's, that, I guess that's where it becomes confusing on. Why is it confusing? Because, well, so say not, oh, being a part of this committee and you're presenting a project, and you say, say, okay, it's eligible, we're going to take it under review. And then you say, okay, now it's time for the application for funding. And I, and I say, all right, where do I fill out the application? Yeah, there's no but there is, the, yeah, there is no actual application for funding. It's more like the details of, right. now you've, you've given a tentative green flag, and then. Do we uh, know anything about the 14 copies? So the, I asked I asked Stuart that oh, you did. Okay. So that is, is entirely dictated that there's no guidelines from the state that says what our application process mm -hmm. needs to look like. They don't dictate that at all. They're pretty, they're only telling us what projects are, are or are not eligible for whatever reason. Our application process is decided of by our committee. By the committee so we can decide that we want it to be digital, we can decide that we want it to be paper copies. You know, that's something, again, part of this whole conversation. Please head up to how do we want this, app what do we want this application process to look like? I know, I think it's always good to have a hard paper copy to back up, you know, that information. But I, like me personally, I don't see any reason why we can't distribute an application digitally and all be able to look at it instead of all of us have, like, so the requirement was 48 hours before the meeting. Every member of the committee had to have a paper copy of that application. Unless someone doesn't have digital capabilities. Right. But we've got to get that hard copy, like you said. Just the other side of this is that with the new town's website that will be live in, in September, as of now September 17, our application, like anything else for the town, can be on the website mm -hmm. and anyone will be able to go to the website, not only read the parameters of it, mm -hmm. but fill it out online, including attachments. And then once they hit submit, it would go to whomever directly to the chairperson or to the clerk, the whoever office. designated, and that would be automatic. So, you know, Mr. Chairman, what I would suggest, and I'm proposing, um, I know you had sent out, and obviously I can't see and don't have it in front of you, but you had sent out a couple of different application processes that you thought looked really good. Yeah, so I actually have one up on the TV right now. Well, timing is everything, isn't it? Yeah. So like the town of Lexington, like they have, it's a whole table of contents where they, they have an overview, they outline the, the uh, coalitions, definitions, and eligible projects for community housing, historic, open space, and recreation. Um, and then they have appendixes, which I'll kind of get through 
We'll go down to the appendixes to kind of look at that. So I mean, this is like the revamp the current stuff that's on the website to make it look more like the one of these. To have all the information available. Everything will be up on this new website, including the, you know, what our minutes, everything will be there. Always. If we so choose. Yeah, because we should, I mean, we even should have links back to the coalition's website for different, like, because there's all those links that fall under those categories. So it's like, if someone's researching their project, they can click on that link and go back and, at, and be able to ask themselves those questions yeah. without having to come back and forth to us, you know, multiple times and get, oh, you know, you're missing this. So no, that's not eligible, but you should do this. Um, let me uh, go back here. Yeah. I did look at this, I don't remember offhand whether they had um, timetables for submission or they had a rolling submission. I know at least one of the towns, maybe Concord or something, you can submit anything at any time. Being fully aware that if you submit it late, it's not going to be a this year town meeting, probably. Right. But that doesn't prohibit you from making a submission. It's not like we're going to say, come back in six months, I don't even want to see it. Right. So, I mean, I'm kind of in favor of the latter, which is. You want to submit something, submit something. You may have submitted it late, and you're probably not going to get a chance of anything happening for a year and a half. But right. we're not going to say, I don't even want to talk to you for six months. I agree 110%. It's like, yeah, you need to understand you're at the mercy of annual town right. meeting. Um, in some instances, again, I think you know, the, you're sitting on a tremendous amount of money if time permits. Yeah. And it, it's something that could be done at a special town meeting if it warrants it based on the project. Yeah, why would we, you know? It's not except, a except, except devil's advocate is that if you have several submissions late, and I can see that because something may occur where suddenly money is needed for something that otherwise they may not have any source to go to, we can't fund it that year. So we say, okay, I'm sorry, this year is, we'll take your application, but, and we, you know, do we ask them to resubmit for the next year or do we automatically take it as an application for next year? And then we run in the risk of saying, well, we're already working on applications from last year. We can't take anything else this year. All right, but that had, that would have to be at the discretion of, of the would. committee, depending on what we have on our plate. It would, but I think I guess what I'm saying is I think we, regardless of anything, I still think we need to have a you know a timeline for submission. But if things are submitted late and there's availability, it will be considered. I don't think you necessarily have to have it like be a, a dead set date. But you just have to have a, the disclaimer there for the people submitting that. If you want this to appear on annual town meeting, we need to see it. No, like at least make the information available so that you know. Say it's you know fe our February meeting would be the latest we would accept an application for eligibility to be presented at June's annual town meeting. You know, based on more on article times and things of that nature. So I, I think I would hate to put Dennis because I agree with you that you know we should be accepting applications on, on a regular. That way, you, I, I think it will alleviate to an inrush of applications of everybody's trying to get in at the last minute. You know, if you want to submit in December for June, great. You know, or October for June, great. You know, let's get ahead of it and have it you know all done, prepared, and then we're not killing ourselves to make it on you know write a warrant article at the last minute. So, but, but just make it known to the people that are submitting that this is so, going to so be. this would be like there are there is there are some windows here. And I don't know what exactly they are because I'm not that familiar with it. But it's big. Uh, the windows are defined by the town meetings, mm -hmm. and there's also a special meeting. Was it February or something? November. November. Right. November. So and yeah, that would be eligible for for something that you see the right? It could be if we so choose. Um, let's just. Actually, because again, Dan had just sent this the other day. The um, special town meeting timeline. So, just for instance, look at this. So, the warrant for the special town meeting closes on September 14th. So, we say if we do go with a two step process, and we would then in this case, we would say, applications, you know, no later than July, 
So we'd have the two months to prepare okay. and then submit it in September before the closing of warrants. So yeah, that would be dictated by when the warrants close. But I think that, that was the intention here was uh, to have a comfortable process, not like um, the playground process last year. So I think it went like this. Uh, this says uh, eligibility applications by November 1st. So we will look at eligibility applications in November, vote on them in December, Look at funding applications in January, maybe February. Vote on them in March. Then uh, vote on the warrant article. Prepare warrant articles. And vote on them in April to meet the uh, April. Is that April. Well, this this one was for for a special, which is yeah. November first. Yeah, I think at April. I think our April meeting was tight to get on the uh, income meeting. So, um, yeah. and similarly with this, we could. You know, we're going to have a whole other flow that started in July. I mean, actually, July would be my time. Well, I feel like yeah, another flow we, start in January. That, that is, to me, is yeah. such a prolonged process. It's like you have eligibility, and now, all right, we took it under consideration. So, consideration doesn't mean I tuck it on underneath my desk until next month. I mean, I think it's our job as, no, no, as a committee. We're, we're responding to them. Yeah. We, we, we discuss it at a meeting. Well, that's what I mean, look, but to wait, but I think in the time that a month has passed where you've taken it under consideration, now that's the time to start everybody collectively thinking, all right, is this something that we're really going to be able to fund? So when you get to the next meeting, we don't have to have this three or four months of meetings. It might be, you know, two months, you know, eligibility. Yes, we approve the eligibility next month. Yes, we approve the um, funding. And then maybe the following month, that's when you write the warrant articles. I, I, or you can also stack them. So like in that month before warrants are due, that's what all we do in that meeting is discuss warrant articles. My, the only, my, my only question and concern there, I guess, in general is we know from the June town meeting, for the most part, by, from the previous year, I'll put it that way, we know in general what we have available for funds. If we were to put potentially something on in November or several items in November, do we know between June and November what we have going for the future year already, what our available funds are? Because we run the risk of expending too much in November and not having what we want available for June. No, because June is, I mean? June is approving the next fiscal years. I agree. No, I mean, uh, the, the reserve, the un, unrestricted yeah. reserve account is kind of an ever-growing or ever-changing yeah. account, so you need to keep a close eye on that. That's what I'm saying. When do we know? When do we know? You should always know, because every month, every meeting, we should have a financial report. We should be staying on top of exactly how much we have now. Yes, yeah, so we're not going to be that close to to zero on you. I, I just, yeah. I'm just throwing it in there for argument and conversation. Well, that's that. Well, that part of the process is, is it eligible? Mm -hmm. and do we have the money to fund this? Like if somebody came up to us and said, oh, we want to buy this $799,000 piece of land <laughs> and we're going to exhaust the entire CPC fund, that's a big conversation that. Because that, then, it, then it puts you in that situation where now we can only have $12,500 to give each other project. Or, or, and I don't know if this is in the application process right now or it should be included in the application process, is this something where we may potentially need to bond it? And remember, we discussed that with Stu. Well, and that's project dependent. So again, exactly. if it becomes so, something like that and you have the capability to bond it, then that's another conversation. So, so that, that bonding business, that would be like, uh, well, the example might be what we were, we were talking about at the very beginning, the historical building that was just bought. Yeah, but is it, is that, like the town if it needs money, takes out a municipal bond. Same, same premise as how we make payments on the police station. So we'll do the same kind of get this, this option, uh, I didn't quite get it all from, you know. We do have the option, option to do that based on, we don't have to have all that money available in the current year, but we have to be able to allocate that money in the years of the bond. Yeah, but is this a bond? Is this a bond on the bond market that you get? And this it's a part of the municipal bond process. Well, we, so we can't issue a bond. I don't think it's formally. A it has to be done by it's, it's the treasurer, the treasurer, or something like that. Correct. I'm not sure. I, I don't really like the idea of. Personally, I don't like 
that idea of bonding is, in other words, you're going into debt in order to satisfy some issue of some sort, right? I mean, say we, 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 somebody did come in with a $700,000 request and we only had, say, 300K in, in, in balance. So why? If you bonded over X number of years, Right, but I mean, an allocation. Right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna bring it up for you right now. There's um, a whole, you know, again, in the data bank, a history of bonded projects. Maybe we'd have to be paying payments. So that's, that's exactly, exactly what it is. We're yeah. making payments on an annual basis, and that has to come from each year's available dollars. So say, for instance, the town of Acton, right? This Wright Hill land purchase, so they bonded 900,000 for 15 years to get to this uh, other, this amount, which is 2 million. So does it say what the payment is? Is it like a, again, this, this plum field was 300, uh, oh. or Hawthorne, 500,000 over a 10 year term. So I'm assuming that is, is isolated at 50,000. Yeah, but yeah, so a little more interest. because of the interest, right? Okay. So maybe like fifty-five or sixty thousand. Which is it? So that was they. It was a five hundred thousand dollar bond right. was spread over ten years. Which so instead that of exhausting your entire account, you do no. 50. I know that what. So ten goes into as that's fifty thousand. Uh, well, that, that would be fifty thousand a year for ten years, but you have some interest on it. Mm -hmm. So it may be a fifty-seven or sixty per year. Right. to get to the final figure, whatever it is. So I think that's that's anyway, that comes out of the CPC. Yes, yes, yes. We would have to vote on that every time there was a payment due. No, you would budget no. it based on your one your one vote for 10 years. So that every year, that money, think of it as being put, set aside. It's put on the on the, on the the small budget. So, so would that be a direction to the town accountant to do that? Who would be sending the money to Wall Street? That's the question, you know what I'm saying? Well, the allocation of our funds, however, we annually allocate our funds. To what would be our participation in this process? It would be, it would just strictly be a Warren article that we, so say, well, we'll use like, say Sweet Snow was available. We wanted to buy Sweet Snow and they wanted a million dollars for it, but we didn't want to cough up a million dollars. So we did, you know, we made the bond for X amount of dollars for so many years. So we would write that Warren article and then allocate that percentage of, you know, or that, you know, however many split of the payments, but it still have to go through town meeting. So yeah, in that sense, we could say yes to it and it could still get shown. <laughs> so it only goes to town one meeting one time, it doesn't go every year. Correct, it's only that one time the bond is good. Yeah, that's fine. But, but I'm trying to get at the mechanism of payment. Just like you get uh, the mortgage payment Oh, your house. Again, it's going to be expended by who? That's a question. So, so it's I like, yeah, either we're getting in, you know, some sort of bill, invoice, whatever it may be. Well, that's what I mean. I mean the, lo the, the, the logic side of it, and the simplest term is probably whatever our allocation is from the town for the year, let's just say, you know, it's $600,000. The $600,000 is going to go from this side of the ledger to here. And then let's just suppose that figure was to be. From that bond was 110,000 a year. It's going to get from here, which has the 600,000, to over here to pay the bank 110,000. And then this is the bill is going to reflect as 490,000 balance. Yeah, we, I mean, we've never done it. Why guess? It? So yeah. we've never we done that. Not, I think. Half but, side, that no, but I can foresee that coming down the pike. So Kevin, so the process for someone who wants to do a project, we should try to keep it around three months from start to finish, basically? I, I think that's a good amount. I think that yeah. three meetings is more than enough right. to approve or deny. And we should, and I like the idea of not going over that like we did in past projects, because as we know. Well, I, I think what happened in the meeting was that, you know, people were like, okay, we say, okay, this is eligible, go for it. And then they went out, they had to get quotes on that, so they had to really, you know, they had to do the so they can they sort of drag the process a little bit longer. Yeah. Well, and I think that that's, that was why we were encouraging people to get started early. Some things could obviously. Well, I think it's okay. Better. Again, like I think, if you're going to present a project, present if you need to, and that needs to be projected in our website and our application processes. Don't you can't come to us with an idea. 
you need to come to us with the entire product. It was, you know, because that's kind of like you did with the playground. Again, with the playground, it was broken down. Right. Here's everything you need. That way, it expedites the product. I think most people did that. The town clerk did the same thing. He had all his information. When they were proposing to do the library, though, it wasn't like that. Jim Aguiar came and said, I felt that he, in effect, said, how much can I get? And then he proposed a number of things that could be done with the library. And sort of a free form discussion of whether those things would be eligible. So, yeah. Yeah, there's different kinds of projects. So, so I think we got to leave room for creativity here. I'd like to see if you see they have a. I, I, think, I think there's a problem in my mind, my experience with money, government, and so forth. If you, um, it, it's, it, it, it sounds a lot like the, the CBC is sliding into this cash cow category for the town. In other words, they don't have any uh, public support, say, for a bond issue, um, especially if it means raising taxes, money, mostly. Uh, and what now they, they say, oh, we'll get the CPC to fund this thing because it's politically tough for us, but it's easy for them. It still has to be passed in, in, at the meeting, town meeting, but it's a lot easier when money is you know, already there, or you're not raising and appropriating. I don't know if you want to, I don't think, I don't know if the CPC wants to go into a debt. CPC would be on the, on the hook for this, because the money has to, for paying that bond, I don't know how exactly it gets done, or, or who, who does the bond, we don't have the authority. I think that's an issue that needs to be part of the conversation more in more detail of whether or not, because right. if we're going to offer this in the application, Potential process or not, that's really right. important. Either we well, no, in the application process, I think you you need to just throw out, and that's again where you need to be very strict on staying within the coalition's guidelines for projects. List those guidelines, and if those projects don't fall within that, like what you can't, you know, but a project you can't turn the blind eye if the project doesn't fit within the guidelines. No, but a project may call. Or potential needing to be bonded. So but, like, is, let's cross that bridge. I don't want to have a conversation about a bond when we don't even have a yeah. project that needs to be bonded. I'd rather cross that bridge when we get to it I instead do, of. I guess I'm, all I'm saying is that I think it needs to be part of the aspect of an application, even if it's one or two words or lines. I think otherwise, no, because that's you're not talking about when those people, when you're coming to us with an application, they should be concerned about its eligibility, yeah. and then the funding falls on us, so they should not be concerning themselves with how we are going to fund it. That needs to be a determination that's, that's a decision of the CPC. I, I don't disagree, but my concern is only that if they think, if they don't know it could be a question of eligibility for that aspect, they may not come before us. Now, that's a deterrent on one level, but I think we need to have something that at least somewhere well, it's the it's a decision by you know when somebody comes for the application of eligibility and we look at it. Um, suppose the amount of money that they penciled in there on that application. Uh, one of the things we should do is to look at our current balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see so if, agree. If this is an undoable thing, then then the decision could come to you know a bond issue maybe, but. Right. Like, yeah, I think that's a good, that's a great point that if it's a project that we all think is worthwhile, but it's, you know, not financially feasible in one fiscal year, then we can, yes, yeah, certainly have that conversation. Um, and we, instead of just straight shooting it down, that's a great point. I just, and I, and I don't disagree with that. I just, but that's, I just don't think that that's, a, that's an applicant's issue to worry about or to have information. I, but I don't want that. Later, I don't want somebody to say, well, you know, you did it two years ago for this project. And what about us? Well, That's why I just think, I think for transparency, it's at least important to have something out there. Even if it says, you know, is your, this, that, that is not a consideration for your project. Blah, blah, blah. But, you know, there's always that but. I, I think you end up chasing your tail if you give too much information about, yeah. especially yeah. about funding. Although, I mean, each one of these Lexington include does say we give, above and beyond being eligible, we give preference to these things. And we may say we give preference to things 
that can be funded in one fiscal year because we don't really, yeah. we don't, well, I think an extreme yeah. case that we can do, but our preference is to do things, and we can just stay up front and say, you know, our, these are the things we give preference to, but then one of them could be, we agree to say things that can be funded in one fiscal year. And that's almost a fair way of, I yeah. think, of acknowledging what we're all trying to say. Right. Yeah. All right. So okay. just tying this all together with what you're saying and what you're saying is <laughs> make, don't make that information part of the application okay. process, but like you're saying, like in Lexington, where it's in your overview or whatever, they, yeah, they, they call that. Yeah. 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 They, they, they list like 15 things to say. These are things we give preference to. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, for better or worse, um, because I know that we, need to obviously put some more time into this for conversation purposes and to come come up with it and i don't think we're going to come up with the answer tonight i am going to make a motion to suggest that you appoint a subcommittee of three to work over the next month to come up with the application process and guidelines to present to us at our september meeting or if you think that's too soon i'll say october but i think september right? because there's other there's a lot of others that are put out there that we can pull from to put it together. So I don't think it's too difficult, but I think it would make sense to have a committee of three subcommittee put it together and come back with a recommendation for the next meeting. If anybody wants to second it, I don't know. I'm just putting that three so it's not a one person. So so. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, I'll, I mean, if somebody wants to second, we can second it and then have discussion. Okay, I'll second it for the court for some of us. I have a motion and a second. What was, I'm sorry, I was so So, Jonathan made a motion to appoint a subcommittee of three. And the chair appointed a subcommittee of three. That I appointed a subcommittee of three to work on a new application. Okay, sounds good. I hate subcommittees. Hate it. I hate pinning that job on like three specific people. You couldn't appoint three This is true. Yeah, that would work out so well. <laughs> I, I would rather, I, I, I would rather really see like a collaborative effort of everybody where a committee of not i think it's nine yeah ish something something like that like i'm perfectly okay obviously we're not gonna have any decision making done through email threads or anything like that but i think it's perfectly okay to you know say hey i really like this from like and then we kind of have this conversation so collaborate with the just collaborate and have everybody say you know i think this is a good piece you know and we might be able to assemble collectively like, let's say three drafts. And you know, the irony, I have to stop you there because I don't disagree in the sense that the irony is if we had something like the Dropbox, that's exactly what we would be doing. Yes. So I think that, is, that is a good point. Yeah, we could have a, you know, set up. Can we get the Dropbox done early? Yeah. I mean, that's. I can set that up right away. Right? Okay. So, yeah, and if Jonathan sends it to me, I can just grant the access yeah. to everybody. And then, yeah, it is. It's just kind of, it's a lot like Google Docs where it's a live document. So you can right. go in, edit. Or write or even put a side note and you know say yeah you know what i don't think that piece fits let's use this yeah. piece and you can have as many folders and files as you want in that dropbox so we could have that we can have our budget we can have other items we can have minutes you can put as much as you want in that one folder my my attitude towards the whole the application or the plans specifically is this there's, there's a reason why the coalition has specific towns listed on their website, it's because those applications work well for them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they'd highlight something that you know wasn't efficient. So I think even that, a lot of them, when you click on them, they come up as a Word doc. So it's like even if we pick our favorites and throw them in the Dropbox, and it's a live Word doc, we can edit it and change the language as we see fit. And then by you know this our September meeting, be ready to you know look at three draft applications. Um, and do I think it's it's just easier to do it that way. Set a pin in on three people. So do we take somebody else's uh, eligibility application and we just tweak it to our own? Right. I mean that's what you do. Well, theoretically, you can put any all these eligibility applications into that Dropbox folder as examples. Right. And then and you can kind of paste it. Right. And then just pull paste. out certain yeah. pieces. Yeah. I like that, Jonathan. Yeah. Okay. And I can actually I very easily could do with everybody um, with Kevin on his laptop next time, we could do whoever needs it, literally 15 to 20 minutes and how to use Dropbox. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's that simple so that everyone's on the same page. If I, as a person who can't see, can use it, anybody can use it. But I really, I don't mean that's our yeah. but it really is friendly to use. You mean for a vote for a vote? 
But <laughs> yeah, so just um, can I, can I, I'm going to clarify. Okay, so I'm going to agree to that. I'm going to withdraw the motion. All right, that makes it easy. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Good. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, what's the next meeting? Third Thursday. Yeah, we'll keep it. Third okay. Thursday. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm going to go over there and uh, talk about what's the meeting over there. Uh, Con Con and uh, they go pretty long over there, probably to 10 o'clock tonight. Oh. So give her a break. What pay to Dropbox? I'm sorry. Is it pay to Dropbox? It's a pay to Dropbox, but I already do it anyway. I want to do it for our expense, yeah, right? If we have our own Dropbox, do we pay for it? Or um, theoretically, you could, but this one's already paid for. It does. I mean, the equivalent of ours is only a few months, so I'm not worried about it. Okay. If you're good with it, ultimately, yeah, and ultimately, if I'm no longer on here or something, then I would just hand it off to whoever. I'm not. Okay. Right, we could always yeah, try to transfer those files over okay. and create yeah. an account. Okay. Yeah. No, so There's so much. That you get X amount of free storage. I'm sure we would we would yeah. eat it up. Um, but there is X I got to look at it for a candy too. We looked at Dropbox one time, but we thought it was too expensive, so we yeah. dropped it. Yeah, I was thinking of a lot. No, and as I said, I have a business version, so I have plenty of room on it. So okay, sounds good. I might be asking you a couple of questions about it. Okay. Okay. All right, everyone. Take care. Thank you. No worries. And I'll spend that laptop. Great. We can sell. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Take care. Yeah, so I'm almost thinking too. We can almost do the same thing with the annual public hearing. But again, on the on the coalition's website, it does give some examples of like how they reach out to the newspaper to that publication. Um, so maybe can we do the same thing and at the next meeting we come up with this is what we want our annual um, public hearing to look like. You know, whether it be you know, committee reports, so each one of us that's representing someone else reports on any projects that we know of. Um, so that might, so I don't want to say we'll iron out the details and, and make a decision in our next meeting, but then the following meeting for those committees and commissions, we probably want to have the conversation and set the date for the, the annual, um, and, you know, we'll set a, set a date for that, work out whatever details we need to as far as sharing it through the newspaper, that that is still a requirement. And also, you know, via the website or social media, so on and so forth. Also, the annual public hearing is the minimum requirement. Right. It's not the only option. I mean, if we want to increase town buy in for when these things come up at town meeting, there may be other ways we can approach it that engage the town more. Mm -hmm. Annual town meeting is just the bare minimum of what we have to do. Correct. Yeah. And the, the annual public meeting that we have to have, I'm assuming that at least through March, that can be hybrid version. Yes, until the, yeah, until until the end of March. Right. 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 And again, it's like you'd have to set that meeting date, create the Zoom link, and have it published in the newspaper as yes. well. Um, does anybody else have anything to add on that or any other new business? Um, did everybody receive a copy of the minutes? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Maybe you did a good job. Everything looks good. Right. So I, I will want to take a motion on the meeting minutes. I move that we accept the meeting minutes for July 28th. <coughs> so I have a second. 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 Go ahead. <laughs> you go. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, future meeting date. We'll just look at the actual date. Um, so it's third, third or third? Yeah. yeah, so set, so that would be September 15th. Six PM. Yeah, I think it's, it's six PM seemed to work well for everybody. Right. I, I guess the only other thing to consider, and I don't know if there's any other interference with other um committees meeting times. You can look at the do we, should we consider moving it to like 5.30 so that like Mr. Digits can stay? So is his uh, conservation also every third Thursday? At seven, yeah. And he seems to need to get over there early to get his stuff put together. Yeah, I'm fine with moving it early. Yeah, I mean, I will. How is your schedule? What time is your day? I'm fine. I have a chance to. No, 5.30 works. Yeah. So when's the next meeting? What's the date? Uh, September 15th. Okay, so it's... Pretty much gone always going to be the, the always I don't know thing. you know what come, why don't we hold up and check with Dave because if he has to go to work he's going from the city. 
Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking out loud. I believe you folks from Cambridge. Or yeah, well, and I don't put the time of the meeting. I don't, we don't need to vote on it anyway. We can so we don't just collectively send out an email and just make sure that 5:30 works for everyone, and then um, and then just take it from there. We'll just set the meeting. The 15th, notice. then. Yeah. The 15th, works. yes, and then time to be determined. Yeah, I think it would be nice to just you know, just always has mm -hmm. to leave early. Let's try to make it a little bit earlier so everybody can participate through this. Can you change it to 6 a.m. since I'm up early? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I do have this one other job that I do. Um, public input, let me just check. Uh, Zoom and make sure nobody is not there. So with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is Jonathan. I will make a motion that we adjourn at 724. 724 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye.